Hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. Today we will be looking at variations, a really nice topic. So before we start, attempt this question. If 8 oranges cost $10.40, how many oranges can be bought for $33.80? Now, how would you attempt that question? Maybe to do this question, what you did is you say 8 oranges is $10.40 and so 1 orange would just be $10.40 divided by 8 which is $1.30 and so the number of oranges bought is just the total price, the 33.8 divided by the price of 1 orange and so you got 26 so 26 oranges were bought for 33.80 right maybe that's what you did now my question is what did you notice in doing this question did you notice anything in particular now what you should have noticed is the more oranges are bought then the more money you must spend makes sense in other words the number of oranges is directly proportional to the price of the oranges Another way of saying that is the more oranges that you buy, the more the price will increase. In the same way, the less oranges you buy, then the less money you would spend. Now, this is known as direct variation. Alright, so direct variation is a situation in which two quantities increase or decrease at the same rate. So, oftentimes, we use worded statements such as, y is proportional to x so that weird symbol right there in between y and x means proportional so that reads y is directly proportional to x when two variables y and x are directly proportional to each other then we write y is proportional to x and then it gives us the equation y is equal to k times x where k is known as your variation constant or constant of proportionality, all right? Now, let's go back to the question, right? If eight oranges had cost $10.40, how many oranges could be bought for $33.80? Now, look at this. We say that the number of oranges bought is directly proportional to the cost of the oranges right which is true because if you buy more orange you're going to spend more money so they must be directly proportional according to the definition and so let n represent the number of oranges bought and c represent the cost of the oranges since they're directly proportional we can write n is directly proportional to c now by the definition of proportionality Right, we can then say that n is equal to a constant times c. That is what we do when they are directly proportional. So since n is equal to a constant times c, so when n is 8, c is 10.40. When we bought 8 oranges, the cost was 10.4. So we can substitute those values into the equation n equal kc and then transpose for k. And so k is 8 divided by 10.40. And so k works out to be 10 over 13. Now this is known as the variation constant. Alright? And so this is the variation constant. Now once we get the variation constant, we substitute it back into the original equation. n is equal to 10 over 13 times c. And when c is 33.8, we need to find n. Because when the cost is 33.8, 80 we need to find how many oranges that is so now we just plug it into the formula plug c as 33.8 and so n is going to be 10 over 13 times c so when you plug c as 33.8 to get n is 26 ah that's the same as the answer we got before and so the number of oranges bought is just 26 it is that simple nice so now let's look at a more exam style question of how they would give you direct variation. Look at this right here. It says S varies directly as T 
and s is 8 when t is 16. Find the constant of variation and write a direct variation equation relating s and t. Then find t when s is 64. Beautiful. So first thing we start with is since they're proportional, then s is proportional to t. So you put the weird symbol again and say s is proportional to t. So now we can then conclude s is equal to some constant times t. Now, when s is equal to 8, t is 16, so plug those into the equation. We plug those into the equation, we get k is equal to 8 over 16 is a half. And so s is a half t, because k is a half. Now, when s is 64, we need to find t. So you plug that into the formula and you transpose and we get t is 128. So when s is 64, t is 128. Alright? So remember the question I'd asked us to find the equation. So the equation, the direct variation equation would be s is a half of t. Beautiful. And the constant, the variation constant would be, as you rightfully say, a half. Nice. Now, there's another way that you can do variation, direct variation, that is. And remember, because the price increase or decrease at the same time, both quantities are being increased or decreased at the same time, then we can say that S1 over T1 must be the same as S2 over T2. All right? Because both quantities are increasing and decreasing at the same rate. And so we can say 8 over 16 must be 64 over the t value that we need to find. So we can cross multiply and then find that t value. And by doing all of that, we'd still get t is 128. So that's method 2 of doing direct variation. Either way is fine, but we prefer to stick to method 1. Now let's look at a table question right here. Given x varies directly as y, what are the values of a and b? And they give us this table right here. So pause an attempt and find a and b. As we should have paused an attempt to find a and b, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, x is proportional to y. And so x is equal to a constant times y. And so when x is negative 4, y is negative 16. And so we plug that into our equation. x has negative 4, y has negative 16. And we transpose for k. We get k is a quarter. So now the direct variation equation is x is equal to a quarter of y. Now look back at the table. When x is negative 5, the y value is a. So we can say that negative 5 is a quarter of a. So we transpose for a and a is negative 20. Ah, beautiful. Method 2. Again, you can always say that the x value over the y value, x1 over y1 is the same as x2 over y2. And by doing that method, you transpose you still get a is negative 20. That's if you want to use method 2, but I strongly recommend doing method 1, finding the constant the variation constant that way is the safest way all right now to find b what happens at b when x is b the y value is 12 so we just put the y value as 12 and set x to b so b is going to be a quarter of 12 and a quarter of 12 is 3 so b is 3 so now you can put a into the table as negative 20 and put b into the table as 3 now look at this what do you observe in the final table? If you divide the x value by the y value, you get the quarter. If you divide negative 5 by negative 20, you get the quarter. If you divide 3 by 12, you still get quarter. So you know that that is correct. Direct variation. You know you're fine. Beautiful. Now let's have a look at a second question right here. A hotel has enough food for 125 students for 16 days. How long will the food last if 75 more students join them? How are we going to solve this question? Now, first and foremost, why, is, why are students at a hotel for 16 days? That sounds wonderful, right? Yep, that sounds wonderful, but let's not think about that. 
we want to think about how do we go about solving this question. Or rather, what do you notice? Well, what we should observe is if more students are going to be at the hotel, right? Then that means the food is going to last a shorter period of time, right? Yeah, man, makes sense. If, if, if a certain amount of food can last 16 days and you add more people, then that means the food is going to last a shorter period of time. This is known as inverse variation. So now we can start by saying inverse variation is a situation in which both quantity, one of them is increasing while the other is decreasing. One is increasing while the other is decreasing. So how do we write that symbolically? So for example, we end up saying that Y, then you put the weird looking symbol for proportionality. Y is proportional to 1 over X. That would mean that Y is inversely proportional to X. Alright? Or some people might write Y varies indirectly or inversely as X. That's how some persons will write it all right so be careful for how you might see the word it in exam question so now when two quantities y and x are inversely proportional to each other we write that y is proportional to one over x and the equation that we get then is y is equal to a constant over x where k is just known as the variation constant all right so coming back to the question the hotel has food for 125 students the last 16 days. Alright. How long will it take the food to finish if 75 more students join? Now let's call N the number of students at the hotel and T the time the food lasts. Right. So look at this. N is proportional to 1 over T. And so following the definition of inverse variation, N is equal to a constant times T. But when n is 125, t is 16. So all we do is input into the equation 125 for n and 16 for t. And then we transpose to get k is 2000. So n is 2000 over t. Now 75 more students were added, right? So therefore n is 125 plus 75, which is 200. Now n is k over t but k is 2000 so 200 is equal to 2000 over t so we transpose for t and we get t is 10 so that would mean that the food would only last 10 days if 75 more students were added that's wonderful so of course let's do some more example here this question says s varies inversely as t and s is 8 when t is 16. Find the constant of variation and write a direct variation equation relating s and t. Then find t when s is 32. Okay, so they're inversely proportional. So we start by writing s is proportional to 1 over t. So s is a constant times t. When s is 8, t is 16. We substitute that into our equation to transpose and find k. We find the variation constant, which is 128. And so now the, the direct equation now is S is 128 over T. But when S is 32, right, we need to find T. That's what they said. So we put S as 32 and we transpose for T and so T is 4. So when S is 32, T is 4. Beautiful. Now, again, let's look at a table question. Given x varies inversely as y, what are the values of a and b given the following table? So we have this table right here. All right. So we start by saying x is proportional to 1 over y. And so x is equal to a constant over y. Now when x is 5, y is 15. So we put that into our equation and transpose for k. Transposing for k, we get k is 75. 5 times 15 is 75. That's lovely. So now we know x is equal to k over y, but k is 75. And so x is 75 over y. But look back at your table. When x is 10, y is a. 
So we plug x as 10 and y as a into our equation. And then we transpose for a. So a is 75 divided by 10, which is 7.5. Now when x is b, y is 12. And so b is going to be 75 over 12, which is 6.25. Ah, so now you can put in your values for a and b into the table. A is 7.5. B is 6.25. Now observe this. And observe this this time. Look at your table. If you multiply 5 times 15, you get 75. And if you multiply 10 times 7.5, you get 75. And if you multiply 6.25 times 12, you still get, of course, 75. And so that would tell you that it is inverse variation. So you know that you're correct. All right? Lovely. So that's it. That's it on variation. This is in section 7 on the CSEC math syllabus. So stay tuned for more. Alright, that's it for today. So that's it for today. So see you next time. Stay tuned for more and do have a blessed day.